Welcome to Off the Press, the program, as you know, where we talk about the national dailies and try to make sense of it. And with me to do so this morning is Taiwo Oyedele from PwC, a fiscal policy expert. Good to have you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, welcome. So we will begin with uh, the Punch newspaper. We have a couple of them this morning, but we shall begin with the Punch newspaper. And it says customs uh, shortlist 162,000... 399 out of 828 applicants. That's a lot. That story is on page 25. Showing car hails Amoteco in Southeast uh, meets on own security outfit. That's on page 2, as you can see already displayed there. And SIM card Mansus Buhari's daughter, DSS, and demands 500 million naira. That story is on page 11 of the Punch newspaper. Omagege group clash over alleged U.S. conviction, also on page 35. 37, rather, I beg your pardon. And uh, the big story for the Punch newspaper this morning is private sector knocks federal government as Buhari signs finance bill. That story is on page 29, or 26, rather. We'll be having that conversation shortly with Taiwo here in the studio. Increasing VAT rate amounts to erosion of capital, according to LCCI. You can't operate bank accounts with TIN, FIRS, insist federal government to earn 2.08 trillion naira from VAT and highlights of bill on page 26 also of the Punch newspaper. Now, four naval men on rescue mission killed in Undo, sadly. That story is on page 38 of the Punch newspaper. And domestic worker commits suicide week before planned visit to parents. That story you find on pages 4 and 5 of the Punch newspaper. And lastly, uh, clubbing kings don't deserve any respect, says a laughing on page seven. Okay, no decision, decision rather yet on Okada Kekemarwa here in Lagos. That story is also on page uh, six of the Punch newspaper. Let's begin with the big story. And because, I mean, you're an expert here, help us unbundle what is this about, uh, you know, private sector kicking uh, against this, uh, the signing of the finance bill help us understand in you know simple terms some of us are not financial experts yeah what this whole thing entails yeah indeed um, I think generally I don't know of any country in the world where anybody is happy to pay more taxes mm -hmm. maybe unless if you are Bill Gates and Warren Buffett are you sure they are asking they, happy yeah, they're asking for, they more, mind. for more taxes <laughs> they're actually asking government to tax them more uh, in the US so they're like strange people in my view so it's not surprising that a section of the private sector, I would not want to generalize, mm -hmm. I'll say a section of the private sector is kicking against it. Um, because the point is, you increase VAT from 5% to 7.5%, and you try all that you could to protect the poor people. So I do not see anything that is wrong with that. If essentially you ask people who have the ability to pay a little bit more, to pay uh, what needs to be paid. Mm -hmm. I think the focus should start to shift from, oh, we don't want to pay the extra 2.5% to what is government doing with the money? Mm -hmm. All the countries around the world that we aspire to be like, that our young people, when they get you know visas to go there, they go and give testimonies. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> these, countries, like. yeah, these countries pay high taxes, so which means Nobody is running away from a country because the tax rates are high. Actually, mm -hmm. if you collect the taxes and you utilize it judiciously to provide social services, infrastructure, human capital development, you would attract people. People will be happy to pay. Absolutely. Because we see value for money. Exactly. So the problem is not the rate. We need to start moving away from just saying rates can go up and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I think also from what you read, um, I, I do not agree with all of the estimates. Um, so one, it does not mean that you're paying from your capital. VAT is a tax that the other person would pay. The only instance though where increase in rates would affect investment is because in Nigeria, we do not have input VAT claim on investment. So in some other countries where the rates are much higher, if you want to invest, like building a factory, mm -hmm. everything you buy and you pay VAT, you get the VAT back so that the cost of your investment is affordable. In Nigeria, we do not have that yet. Government have it as part of their plan um, at some point to give those kind of credits. Again, the government will not raise 2.8 trillion. Mm -hmm. So this is the way we always overestimate everything. When the National Assembly, um, you know, um, 
members were talking about stamp duties mm -hmm. that they've been collected. <laughs> I saw two trillion. From where yes. would that come from? You know, and the central bank governor, they had invited me to the uh, bankers retreat um, recently, like last month. Said they've not even collected 150 Half billion. <laughs> not even 10% of it. So now, if you look at the amount of VAT we collected in 2018, it was 1.1 trillion. For 2019, the figures are not out, but it will be around 1.2 trillion. Hmm. You cannot raise VAT rates by 50%. And expect increase in collection by 300 percent it's against all known principles mm -hmm. because when the rates go up what tends to happen is if people will drop off because they don't want to avoid paying the taxes i'll say realistically maybe um, our vat collection will go up to about 1.7 trillion Okay. From about 1.2, uh, it should not be up to 2.8. Mm -hmm. that's, yes. that's too ambitious. It's of us. too ambitious <laughs> because somebody will start budgeting for that amount <laughs> okay. that we are not going to collect. All right. Yeah. So, uh, do you, I mean, um, you can't operate bank accounts without TIN, FIRS, incis. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think this is a very important point actually mm -hmm. because I've seen a lot of Wouldn't misinformation. Yeah, a lot of misinformation around around the place. And just to let you know, so I was a member of the committee that drafted the finance bill. Oh, so. So, uh, so I can give you some insight. Now. Yes, yes. So what the Finance Act, so we keep saying Bill is now an act, act. says mm -hmm. is that for you to open a bank account yeah. that is for business purposes, okay. you require a tax identification number. For business purposes, if the business account is for business yeah, purposes. Yeah, which is just very reasonable. Okay. So if you have your personal accounts, no business, do not worry. Because I'm wondering, if I don't have a business and I have a personal account, they're asking me for TIA. Exactly. <laughs> so that's not intentional. So the vast majority of Nigerians don't have to worry about TIN. Okay. Now, that's point number one. Point number two is, even if you use your account currently for business mm -hmm. and you don't have a TIN, this law says that will give you time to get the team. Okay. Even if the law came into effect yesterday, it does not mean that they're going to close your account immediately. It gives you time. So that time, as indicated in national task policy, is up to 90 days. Okay. Three we months. don't know whether government will give 90 days, but I would imagine it will not be less than 30 days. Now, should you want to open an account today, now that the law has come to effect, or we don't know what the date will be when it's gazetted, you will require to present a team to open the account if the account is for business purpose. Okay. Okay. So altogether, the good news is that TIN does not mean that you have to pay tax. Okay. It only means that you should go we and want register. Hear, we don't want to hear Nobody this tax. wants to pay tax. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So it simply means that you should go and register. It's, sim it's similar to like trying to get NIN. So just okay. go and register. And the process for registering is simple. Uh, from the Joint Task Board website, you can register. Mm -hmm. You can walk into any tax office, whether it's state tax authority or federal and revenue service. You register in minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, in fact, and if do you, you have get a, it immediately, yeah, so you get it immediately. Um, if you have a BVN, which means you have a bank account, most likely you may even find that a TIN has been allocated to you automatically. Mm -hmm. When you go to the Joint Task Board website, you see a link there for you to verify. It only requires you put your date of birth. You put your BVN and it will bring out your team. So this thing is not as complicated as people are making it to, to sound. Uh, I had a meeting with the finance minister last week, and one of the things I suggested to her, which she agreed to, is that we can actually ask the Joint Task Board, they're the one driving this team to okay. unify across Nigeria, that banks already do BVN, which means they have the facilities to mm -hmm. capture data. data. Right. Why don't we allow banks to register people for team? And so if you have a bank a account, easier. exactly, and you don't have a team, as you walk to your branch, the nearest branch, you just register in less than five minutes. And it synchronizes your data. Absolutely. So on one hand, Nigerians want, want Nigeria to get better, but we have to try and cover all these loopholes of people doing businesses and not paying taxes. All right. Uh, thank you for that cl clarification there. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back in a moment.
We are still here on Off the Press and we're continuing with the Nation newspaper, which says a Nigerian lady rescued from Lebanon slavery. How we did it by official on page five. That's a bit of good news there. Go on, Utomi and Anya won against another civil war. That story is on page seven. And something exciting about sports here. Dangote renews bid to buy Arsenal. Targets next year. Uh, uh, we have our sports in-house analyst here. She'll be talking about it in a moment. And the custom shot list uh, applicants, uh, and that's on the on page 10 of the Nation newspaper. And again, the story on the VAT, 7.5% VAT kicks off as Buhari signs a finance bill. TN now compulsory for bank accounts holders implementation to wait till Gazette. Thankfully, we had an expert on bundle that earlier. Operation Amoteku, a fulfillment of people's yearnings. That's according to... Wally Shoinka. It's there on the front page, but it's continued on um, page uh, seven. And yes, with me, we have new guests, uh, which I mean, they're familiar faces. It's Femi here, Dr. Femi Idowa Degoke. Thank you for being good with morning. us. And good morning. And of course, our in house, uh, Destiny Honor <laughs> Good morning. <doctor. laughs> good morning. All right, so what are your thoughts on uh, the newspaper this morning? There's the Nigerian lady, there is go on. Well, the, uh, let me start from the Nigerian lady. The good lady. news. Yeah, the good news. Uh, let's say, a big thank you to the Nigerian uh, consulate in uh, Lebanon, Lebanon and then the Quara state government for pushing for this, what has happened. Mm -hmm. And then let's sound a warning to our people. You don't just jump on the plane or follow people and say you want to travel out of Nigeria. Yeah, we know the country is under so much pressure, but it's better to be at home, to be alive than to be outside and be the late. Mm -hmm. And thank God for technology also, yeah, yeah, you know, that yeah. uh, pushed it for yeah. that. All right, uh, there's something on uh, Never Again, Utomi and Go On warning against another civil war. Yes, it was uh, you know, we've been, for over a few years now, we've been talking about how tension is building in the country, ethnic diversity, ethnic bias, religious contentions and all that, uh, which has led to Boko Haram. We saw Boko Haram and we, we thank God they were able to uh, curtail them, even though they're still there. But what the, the elder state men have been saying, or what they were saying at the fora yesterday or the day before yesterday, was, uh, I think it was it's 50 years now mm -hmm. since the civil war ended, yes. January 1970. So it's 50 years now. And they are uh, sounding a very good warning to us not to let it happen, happen mm -hmm. again because uh, there's a general saying that there's no st uh, no nation that survived two civil wars. That's correct. So, mm, so never yeah. again. So yeah. let's go to something a bit exciting. Uh, I'm going to tell you news bit to buy us now. Destiny, let me ask you, is this an exciting news? <laughs> it's, an exciting, it's, uh, it's actually an exciting news, but this, this, uh, this buying Arsenal has been on for almost four years now, so yeah, we have not really seen any bids to buy Arsenal yet. But if he actually decides to buy Arsenal in 2021, or rather 20, this year as uh, No, he didn't say he, he, he has projects. You, you project, guys don't put him on, on pressure. He says he has projects after his project. <laughs> but he has, he has actually been saying it for some okay. time. But if, this, if he actually buys Arsenal, I think it's going to be a good move for the Gunners because um, looking at the top five teams in England, Arsenal, they have become so downgraded that mm. for almost three seasons, they have not really performed to their expectations. Now, uh, looking at Chelsea back in 2003-2004, when uh, uh, Ibrahimovic, Abramovich bought that club, he, he, he invested a lot of money, close to 500 million pounds was invested in that club. And just in the space of three years, he has spent almost 90 million sacking coaches just because Whoa. they have not performed well. So if Dangote buys uh, Arsenal, he's going to be not just for the club, but as a businessman, the as richest businessman, businessman in <laughs> yeah. the whole of Africa. Mm. It's, 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 it's a good business deal, but can, is he actually going to buy it for 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, mm. 2020? And we are still hearing this, we are still listening to the same news that he wants to buy Arsenal. But let him buy it, then we know that Arsenal, they are actually in a good place because this man, he sees, he sees sports as a way of making money. Mm -hmm. So if he buys Arsenal, I believe he's going to definitely pump all his investment, all his wealth into it. <laughs> but can he do it alone? That's but, the question we are going to ask ourselves because you cannot own, he's going to be the first man in Nigeria or rather in Africa to own a European club. And he's going to be like a big, I mean, I see you're very, also very, very big excited. on his shoulders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if he actually buys it then, 
Congratulations. Okay, so to him. we're going to place a call after now to ask him if he will he's buy, going it. To buy it. <laughs> As he said, that's <laughs> just a joke. But is that what he, you know, he says he's going to take us now to the next level? Could that be what he's also implying in terms of? Well, if you are buying the club and you don't, you are not taking them to the next level. Why are you buying the club? <laughs> you are just going to waste your money. You need to invest in the club, and when you see they are doing well, your mm -hmm. investments. The they just they, they they kind of play out to you that yeah your money is actually being worked on so okay it's a it's a good deal all right thanks uh, destiny for that intervention now we'll go to this day and it says again the same story basically i'm talking about 50 years after go on rallies nation against civil war showing car akin to a bemoan poor leadership okoro's illness delays a supreme court judgment in six governors election appeals that story is on the front page but it's continued on page eight uh page eight of uh this day newspaper and then we have um PDP blames malls for crisis in Lagos and Kano Kogi. That story you'll find on page five also. And growth prospects for MS, uh, MSMEs widen as Buhari signs for a finals bill. And just uh, the story that um, Destiny is so excited to talk about, which is Angote renews interest in Arsenal plans take over in 2021. Okay, so there's no need to call him again, I think. So any intervention on this one for me before we move on? Well, um, <clears throat> I'll quickly just talk about the growth prospect for mm -hmm. uh, MSMEs mm -hmm. while doing, as well on Science the finance the bill. Sign yeah, it is said that, yeah, the sign on the bill, or it's become an act yes, now. Yes, it's become an act. Uh, it is said that uh, for SMEs who have a turnover between less than 25 million naira, we pay no tax. They have a tax-free, uh, which is it's good. Mm -hmm. It's to encourage entrepreneurship, but I will put a but. I don't As want people, always, yeah. <laughs> because I, I've always, I'm always, I'm an advocate of uh, equity, justice, and uh, people's governance, mm -hmm. people's driven governance. Yeah, it's good to say uh, if you're an SME, you don't pay tax when your turnover is less than 25 million, mm. and then if it's over 25 million to 100 million, you pay 20 uh, percent. But the challenge is, is there ease of doing business for these people? Mm. What is the entrance prospect of people doing business? I'm an entrepreneur myself, and I know what's taking me over seven years. Yeah. So you speak it, from a place of knowledge. Yes. The truth is that there's so many bottlenecks apart from tax. If you want people to pay tax, you create the infrastructure. The problem in Nigeria for over 20 years that we had democracy, the people, an ordinary man on the street, does not trust this government. Unfortunately. Uh, we'll quickly just go to Vanguard in the interest of time. And again, it's the same story. 7.5 VAT regime kicks off as Buhari signs finance bill. That story is on page four of the Vanguard newspaper. And we have Amoteko, a pleasant gift by Southwest governors. <laughs> That's according to Wale Shoenka on page 13. Uh, lack of PIB threatens federal government's 40 billion Naira barrels uh, reserves, according to investigation conducted. That story is on page 22 also of the Vanguard newspaper. Uh, again, the story, 15 years after and let's revisit issues that caused civil war that's go on and Shoinka and the rest of them uh, talking about that why detained Sheikh Hussaini rejects uh, lie detector t test aid that story is on page um, 11 of the Vanguard uh, newspaper and uh, we'll go to we'll turn to the back page and there's something on sports for the umpteenth time then Gote says he will buy us now okay we've heard any coach tips team for comes uh, Cup's success, uh, Ramos set to miss 15 days. Uh, Setien chosen to replace Valverde at Barca. Hopefully I've not murdered the names anyways. Uh, so we'll take one story from the front page and then give uh, Destiny the chance to intervene on sports also. Okay. Well, let me talk about it. Uh, let me, uh, about, uh, do I agree with what? I was going to ask, do you agree with Shoinka saying Amoteko yes. is a gift? Well, yes. Uh, it's a gift because we all know that we've had uh, security issues in the country. So, and it's, for me, whether we like it or not, gradually we're going towards the restructuring because having regional or state vigilante is one of the restructuring because the police, our uh, security harm of government over the last four, five, six years mm -hmm. have really shown that they don't have the capacity and they don't have the human resources Mm. to combat so they need support so it's a welcome development all right unfortunately destiny this is where we're going to end destiny and femi thanks for coming you'll be here to talk about all the sports <laughs> stories tomorrow we will call it a wrap now here on uh off the press we do this every day weekday 8 30 here on plus tv africa and i am amaka okoye have a, have a good day <laughs>